Hi, I'm Nick, co-founder of Arbor Arms, and today I'm going to go through some of the functionalities of the ambush belt. The first thing I'm going to start with is sizing. So the sizing is based on your pant size. So if you uh, wear an oversized pant to accommodate uh, appendix carry or you just like a loose fitting pant, it's not based on that size. It's going to be based on what your pants would be if you were wearing like a duty pant of some sort, like a uniform. Um, so if I wear a 38 pant because I am a 36 and I appendix carry, then I'm going to go off a 36 because that's really the true size of my pants. So the sizing <clears throat> is as follows. It has a, a high number and a low number, so 32 to 36. That's the range that this belt covers. If I was on the low end of that, every one of our sizes overlaps by one inch. So the size below that is going to be a 2933. And so if I'm on the low end of that spectrum, I may want to go down one size to that belt. Uh, that said, it's the number 36 being the longest version of this belt does not translate to tip to tip, it's 36 inches. We've done all the math to convert it to accommodate the uh, addition to your circumference that is, comes from just even adding a single layer of belt adds a substantial amount of length that you wouldn't expect. So again, this is based on your duty pant size. Uh, one of the things I wanted to address is the weight bearing configuration for this belt. So the base belt is not weight bearing. So it doesn't matter which buckle you have, um, it's not intended to be weight rated. However, in the event that you need a uh, safety line, you can run a Cobra belt as your liner belt. And that gives you a soft loop that does have a safety anchor. You're just gonna wear that underneath your belt. So you may wanna go with the side release buckle for your weight bearing, your load bearing belt, and use the Cobra buckle as the liner belt. You can, and I am doing it right now, wear a, a Cobra over a Cobra, but in that case, you're paying the weight penalty for two Cobras, and you're also paying for two Cobras, which are a bit more than the side release buckles. So in this case, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this carabiner, and then I'm just gonna route it over both layers of the belt, and that's going to allow me to be weight bearing, but it's not tied to this belt, which is gonna keep it from being clunky and, uh, keep it streamlined. It comes in two configurations, the plastic side release buckle and the Cobra buckle. And both of those have some slight differences in how you're gonna attach different items. So it's a two inch wide belt. So that allows us to directly attach um, belt loop items such as a, a UBL. Okay, so for that configuration, we have a slightly different methodology we're gonna use for, for both belts because of the differences in the buckle. With the Cobra buckle, we're going to just basically push it through the, the gap. And it's gonna be a little tight, but it's gonna pass through those loops, okay? So just pop it through and then slide it to wherever you wanna get to. So now if you're left-handed, you're gonna be sliding it obviously farther around to the other side. But once you get past the buckle, it's just gonna be easy peasy. It is gonna sort of lock on the bottom stitches and that's gonna kind of give you like a a way to stabilize it in place wherever you want it to be. So for the side release buckle, we're gonna do something slightly different. We're going to first remove the retainer for the excess web. Just take it over the buckle, set that aside. <clears throat> then we're going to pinch the stop loop together and pass it through the buckle. So this is a single uh, reduction. So that's what your normal side release buckle would look like but we're gonna take it back through this common loop and then one more time back through the buckle in order to remove it completely. So back through there, through the brake and off, okay? So now once we have our free running end, we're gonna grab our UBL and now we just have a basically a running piece of web. We're gonna pass that through, duck the common loop through And that's all we have to do. Now, for right-handed shooter, it's gonna sit right there. We got our two inches, nice and stable. And now we just need to re reinstall our buckle. So we're, what we're gonna do with this is we're going to have the breaking edge down. We're gonna take the leading edge of this buckle, compress that uh, stop loop again, and we're gonna pass it through the front of the buckle, back through the brake, through our common loop, compress that 
stop loop again, and we're just going to go back through the break. Okay? And now we're back in the standard configuration. So we should end up with a nice soft figure eight that allows this to do double reduction. Okay? So now once we have that, we're just going to reinstall our uh, elastic retainer, pass that over the buckle, and we're back in business. Now we're going to go ahead and molly some pouches on here. <clears throat> so as we talked about earlier, there's we can adjust the, the ride of these pouches. So in this case, this is a rifle mag. This is a third-party pouch, it's not ours, but it's obviously we're conf um, compatible with, with PALS so, or Molly. So I'm gonna bring this over to my support side, and I'm gonna say I want this to be on the lower half of the belt so that the top of the magazine is lower than the edge of my plate carrier. So all I'm gonna do is sort of do a reverse pinch is the easiest way here, where you're kind of uh, making the, the slots pucker a little bit. And then I'm just going to duck the weavers through, just like we would with any other type of, of molly. And now I'm just going to flip it back over. And then on this side, just route it how we normally would. Okay, so now that gives us a ride that's lower than the edge, so the top of the magazine is going to be sitting right up here. Okay, so for the next pouch, this is a uh, pistol pouch, and so this one, I'm going to, I actually want it to be right in the middle, so that the top edge of this pouch is going to sit just like so, so it's going to give me a slight little shelf to catch to reinsert these guys. So all I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to select the two that I want to pass through and I'm going to duck this weaver under both. It can be tight depending on the type of weaver you got. Um, so especially the old style uh, Molly pull the dot type pouches are going to be the most challenging and I would, I would say using uh, a pair of uh, pliers to kind of reach through and pull them is not a bad move, uh, especially with those where you have like a bulky snap that has to pass through. It will pass through, it's just going to be a little bit snug. Okay, so now I've got got this guy, guy through, it's justified to the middle. And now we just duck behind the web. So we can end up with whatever the optimum ride is for these pouches. Lastly, we're going to do a uh, malice clip. A lot of you are familiar with that. There's obviously different generations of malice clips. Some of them are the kind of uh, zigzag version. So in this case, I'm going to justify this one all the way down because I want the top edge of this zipper to be in line with the top of the top of the belt. So for this one, I'm going to pick my location. I want it to be sort of small at the back. Run this as a med pouch. So that's easy enough. Slid those guys through. Flip it around so you can see. And then we're just going to route it through like you would normally. And then back into the locks. So as you can see, all these guys are going to ride right where we want them at different heights, depending on which pouch we're using. If the ambush belt meets your requirements, come check us out at arborarmsusa.com, where we have innovation from the roots up.